Hi you guys, how you doing? Your girl is back. It's your girl Colors and I'm back with another video. So, a lot has happened. Your girl has been gone for an extremely long time. Not on purpose and we're gonna get right into it. So, your girl has been gone for about 11 months, almost a year. And that was totally unplanned. So I thought I'd go ahead and sit down with you guys, talk to you guys. Let's get reacquainted because a lot has happened. So I just want to sit down and make a video and tell you what happened. So in order to understand what has happened and where I've been, we got to kind of take it back. If you are new to my channel, I am a mother of two girls, three and four. Prior to having them, prior to becoming a wife, prior to everything, I have gone through a lot in my life. Being kicked out at 18 years old, always fighting so hard to have something and to be a part of something and do great. I was always a good student in school, always doing A's and B's, but I feel like my circumstances was always in the way. Don't you cry. It is too early for that. You know I'm good for that. But my circumstances always made life a little difficult for me. So after being kicked out, I ended up going to Job Corps in Miami, graduated from that like superior doing extremely well um, but decided to come back home and there's a reason why I'm telling you all this because I want you to understand my mindset of even going through all the transitions I'm at now so coming back home and going back through the struggles again not really sure if it was worth me coming home which I could have stayed there's another program I could have went and been a part of and you know give me a job and stay where I was but <clears throat> if I would have done that I wouldn't have had my kids and I wouldn't have met David which was the real turning factor and me starting to become stable it's so funny because me and my best friend would always make this joke about uh me being Miss Mobile and since you have come into her life David she has been solid like really um I always have the joke with her. I call her Miss Mobile because she's always around, moving around. And it's like you gave her that stability. Because I was always here, there, this person's house, this couch, sleeping in my car. Like I was just going through a lot. And when I met David, it was starting to build a foundation. That being said, I did kind of skip over the fact that when I did come back from Miami, I did end up going to community college just to know the cat <laughs> fighting through that with my circumstances but it was still kind of in limbo to where my financial situation needed to override my education you out here making a lot of noise in these people's cameras in these people's ears look you almost got faced it you met me he gotta go. What is you doing? What is you doing? Right, let's get off of that. Now my frame all probably different, my hair. Come on now. Uh, where was I, where was I? Let's hope I'm just on track. Trying to balance college and deal with my circumstances was becoming greater. Trying to make something of myself. Also to, I had to get end up getting a loan to try to get cars so I can be able to get to school and get to work. But then both of the cars I got the student loans with broke down and with like lemon cars. And it was just like a whole lot until one, meeting David and two, getting my dad to 
um, be a co-signer on a car. And I think that's when my life started to change. Let's fast forward to things starting to look up. You know, years are going by, me and David's relationship don't go in good. We move in together probably like six months after dating and you know things are going well but over the past few years i have always been in this fight of feeling like i deserve more i deserve better and i'm supposed to be successful and prosperous and i feel like in spite of all my circumstances it felt like i couldn't get it and i just didn't understand why so even though I prayed my life away to become a mom and I have gotten that and I've been so incredibly blessed to get that but after that subsided I started to feel those feelings of inferior again you know especially when you're in a relationship with someone who hasn't gone through a lot of struggles and always kind of had things going their way and don't know what it feels like to have an imbalance of help and people there and supporting and kind of pushing them through and the only thing you have to worry about is let me go to school let me go to work you know and just kind of going through those different levels of life just climb the ladder it was tough it was tough for me to see and it, in some ways it made me jealous i kind of got angry i kind of even questioned god like why why me why you know other people in this world just easy and then me being a good person just can't seem to just catch a break going back to the point <laughs> i have started to get those feelings again what if he's not here what am I gonna do? Am I able to support my kids? What if something happens to them? What if we break up, you know? I started to get anxious about that, of me not being able to support myself in the same way that if something happened to me, he would be able to sustain. I don't want to be in a situation where God forbid anything happens, you know, my circumstances drastically change because everything's on my back, you know? So one day I end up seeing an opportunity at work to be able to get a CDL license, just come to the classes at work and you can get your CDLs in like four weeks, I think it was. All you had to do was pay like $180. So I did that, I told David about it, we decided to kind of press on because mind you, by this time we already had a wedding, even though the circumstance is better, we're still living paycheck to paycheck essentially. Let it be my luck that after three days of being in class and balancing work and then taking off half of work because when you go into this class, you're cutting out of your check. They'll let you go to these classes, but they're not gonna pay you to go. So, my luck have it that I go to these classes after two or three days, it tells me they never got the money that I sent them. I'm like, how do you not get the money? I ended up showing them my bank account and they were like, well, we didn't get it. So, you can't come to class. Or I need to pay the $180 again. Well, I wasn't doing that because I, I just did that. <laughs> Why would I trust you with 180 more dollars? So I ended up dropping out of that and going back to work. But fast forward a year and a half ago, around last January, I ended up seeing the opportunity arise again but not necessarily for cdo but we will pay for you to go to school up to like six thousand dollars so i'm like oh well i ended up doing some research with local colleges or whatever that offered uh trucking opportunities end up finding one end up fitting one in the budget end up being a month away from when i was signing up so i was like you know what i'm about to do it and that's kind of when i started to kind of fall back <laughs> on youtube because at the time i was working overnight like 12 hour shifts it was wild the next month code rolls around i'm going to trucking school and i'm doing that in the day 
but I work overnight. So now I'm balancing that between school. Sometimes I will use some PTO time to go to class. And the crazy part is the location of the school in comparison to my house, in comparison to my child, it was a whole lot. I swear there were some days I was maybe getting three, four hours of sleep and doing it again. And I was taking a lot of time off work, putting a lot of PTO time. And it was like, I was having no time at all. Oh my God, it was a struggle. I was getting up at eight. Then, or sometimes I would put in PTO time for 3 a.m., then sleep till five, then go to school at 9 a.m. And then the classes was like two weeks of like five days, of five days that you couldn't miss. <laughs> And that was so entirely tough. Now, if you know anything about trucking or anything like that, you would know that a lot of people will say it's simple, it's easy, almost hand it to you, all kind of stuff. Two weeks, four weeks, no. I was in school for four months, okay? <laughs> now, I wasn't supposed to be in school for four months. Not my fault, but the program and time. And there's just a lot of reasons, which I could put in other videos that's going to be more about trucking. <laughs> So from February to like June, I was in school. <laughs> Balancing overnight with being in school with tests, lectures. It was a phase of getting the permit and you have to come back, go examine the trucks, learn the parts, watch videos. It was a lot. And then once you get through the first two months, it was like, now I need driving hours. In my school, we had to have 11 four hour individual drives which is the reason why i chose the school anyway because it was one-on-one -on -one. that just took a long process in itself to get those four hour drives in and then i finally graduate i graduate then it's now it's time to take all these other tests to actually get my cdl which i end up getting my um cdl in june as well then now it's time for a job. I think June to July 1st, I was in recovery mode. And also we would go on a trip to Jamaica, which I partially filmed, which I might throw in its own video or throw it somewhere, I don't know. But went to Jamaica. Between those two or three weeks, I ended up getting a trucking job that I was leaving the week after I came back from Jamaica. <laughs> shenanigans i ended up going to jamaica for one week so i came back for like three or four days and then i was off to texas okay i was off to texas i ended up getting a job uh, a trucking job where i was going to be working over the road get flown out to different states to work locally for about three to four weeks and then come back home so I went to Texas from July, middle of August, learning about trucks. I was training and doing testing, everything like that. It was essentially school all over again. <laughs> so you can see why I was like totally in my A. I was living essentially by myself for the first time, which in some way felt good because I was almost feeling like I was getting the school experience that I felt like I missed. I was feeling very deeply wounded by that. So having this first time living experience by myself, having this first time experience balancing myself with, as an adult essentially was great. But then I had kids by this time, right? So that was really tough. I'm not gonna get too deep into that because I'm gonna film another video deeper into being a mom and working over the road as a trucker. So I will be filming that, but that was really tough. I could I could definitely say that, but having an amazing support system is what's gonna get you through. Oh, I do wanna add this side note, cause I'm looking at my notes and I realize there's notes for a reason and baby used them. <laughs> because I wanted to tell you why trucking in, in particular. One, because I wanted a job that was still equally hands-on but one thing that I really, really, really enjoy about being into trucking is because there's no like real hardcore manager and dealing with people managing me is getting old because people take advantage and all that kind of stuff. So I wanted independence essentially while making money. And I don't like managing people cause I don't like telling people what to do. But going back, basically I was, 
out there. One thing about trucking you would realize is you work 70 hour a week. That was a balance, but I had a good time at the same time. I ended up graduating and then getting my first assignment to the lo first location, which was Tennessee. I ended up going to Memphis, Tennessee. And in my transitions, I would make these side notes. Working in Texas and working in Tennessee as a Florida girl was a culture shock. Oh my gosh. First of all, the Texas heat, I thought Florida was hot. Florida is hot, especially Orlando. Orlando is hell. But people, environments, energies from Texas to Memphis, things they don't have, adjusting to styles. It was a real culture shock. And one thing's for certain, two things for sure, I am a Florida girl through and through. Okay, I have realized this, I didn't think so before, but definitely is. Cause Florida energy is very, you do things how you want to, you live life how you want to, you chill, you go out, you go to the beach, you become a beach bum. It's just very like retired or vacation lifestyle. And you can pick and choose where you want your energy at. Like not having beaches and water, theme parks and stores and things just access to you right there across the street, 10 minutes away is different. People are different. <laughs> attitudes are different it's like more angry-ish <laughs> and i wasn't used to that and i actually really did still have a good time in dallas i definitely did but going to memphis the woman was too stunned to speak and not have an uber and granted i never used uber until living in dallas not any of those things because i have a car but i'm a car i'm not going <laughs> the dangers oh my god I definitely gotta put that in another. I'm going off on a tangent. I don't wanna get too much. Watch out for the videos about all that stuff and the danger and stuff and the things and the dirty. And just. <sighs> yeah, I went through all that. And then eventually some things happened with me and my job and everything like that. We ended up coming decision to part ways with communication with David about um, coming home. It was very tough. So then eventually we ended up coming to terms. So I'm gonna be local end up being local. Girl, I'm local. <laughs> in some ways, I feel like local is tougher than being over the road. No, a lot of ways. A lot of ways tougher. Yeah. <laughs> they try to be like, oh, you be home every day. Yeah, but you're gonna work hard, harder and longer. I guarantee it. I probably been doing that for about four months or so and being local, being back home, which is a transition in itself. <laughs> being back home and giving David that break, oh my God. I think I wanna do a video with me and him together and kind of reminiscing of the time periods that I've been gone. Let me know if you want to hear about that because hearing his perspective would probably be really nice. So I've been doing that for roughly about four months now and me and David have been having conversations and I have come to terms that working for people at this point isn't what I really want to do. <laughs> it almost will be more cost beneficial for me to be home. So we are playing around and toying around with the idea and I really want to come back to you guys and start talking to you guys more and filming my life more and coming back to this and picking back up to where I started. So. Yeah, essentially this video is just really, really long winded way of saying what happened, where my mental point was. I became a trucker. Your girl was pushing 18 wheelers, box trucks, working over the road, coming home. There's just been a lot of different transitions in my life. And that's why I have been gone. Hopefully y'all make sense. Filming this, honey, I'm a little rusty. So forgive me if I'm a little bit all over the place. Girl, gotta get used to this again. I think that's gonna be all for this video. Uh, please comment down below if you have any questions, we'll have a conversation about what's been going on. If there's something else you would like to see, please comment that down below. You know, let's just have a conversation. I definitely, definitely, definitely missed you guys so 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 much and it feels so good to be talking to you guys again so your girl back <laughs> take it or leave it i'm here so yeah that's gonna be all for this video i definitely love you guys and we'll see you in the next one bye guys